It's just, I wish, I wish we had a fair media in this country, and we really don't. That you bought, the argument is that you bought yourself some time, you didn't use it to prepare hospitals, you didn't use it to ramp up testing. Right you're now, so, you're so, you're so disgraceful. Why do you keep calling this the Chinese virus? Your own aide, Secretary Azar, says he does not use this term. He says ethnicity does not cause the virus. Why do you keep using this? A lot it of people say it's China. racist. It's not racist at all, no, not at all. It comes from China. That's why. It comes from China. Uh, as you know, China tried to say at one point, maybe they stopped now, that it was caused by American soldiers. That can't happen. It's not going to happen. Not as long as I'm president. Uh, it comes from China. It's really a fantastic thing. So what I think I do is I'd like to, for the media, I'd like to go around the room and we can do just a quick introduction of each other. And uh, I'll start with me. My name is Donald John Trump. <laughs> and, you know, I think they want to try and make a deal with us, but I'm not sure. They would like to see a new president in a year and a half so they could continue to rip off the United States like they've been doing for the last 25 years. They would love to see a guy like Sleepy Joe Biden, who has no clue what the hell he's doing. They'd say to Sleepy Joe, sir, just sign right there. Oh, okay. I'll sign. The U.S. is doing far better than any other country when it comes to testing. Yes. Why does that matter? Why is this a global competition to you if every day Americans are still losing their lives and we're still seeing more cases every day? Well, they're losing their lives everywhere in the world. And maybe that's a question you should ask China. Don't ask me. Ask China that question, okay? When you ask them that question, you may get a very unusual answer. Members of Congress are now being tested positive for coronavirus. And we, you have almost two dozen who are self-quarantining. Do you um, have any guidance for Congress? Should they? I know all of them. And uh, I don't know if they're sitting like you people are sitting. You're actually sitting too close. You should really, we should probably get rid of about another 75, 80 percent of you. I'll have just two or three that I like in this room. I think that's a great way of doing it. We just figured a new way of doing it. Uh, but you're actually much too close. You know, you two, you should leave immediately. Well, the Washington Post is going wild lately. I don't know what happened to them. I guess uh, something happened, like we don't call them back or whatever. These are very dishonest uh, media sources. They're very dishonest. What, sir, why are you saying that to me specifically? I'm telling you, I'm not saying it specifically to anybody. I'm saying it to anybody that would ask a nasty question That's like that. That's not a nasty Please question. Please go ahead. Why does it matter? When okay, uh, anybody else? Please go ahead in the back, please. I have two questions. No, it's okay. But we'll you pointed to me. I have two questions, Mr. Next. President. Next, please. But you did. You called on me. I did, and you didn't respond. And now I'm calling on. Sorry, I just. The young lady in the back, please. I just wanted to let my colleague finish. Okay. But can I ask you? Ladies a and gentlemen, please? thank you very much. Appreciate but it. You thank you very me. much. You had a lot of really nice people running our country over the years. Perhaps I'm not nice, but I'm doing a great job for you. <laughs> Well, it's true. said repeatedly that you think that some of the equipment that governors are requesting, they don't actually need. You said New York might need, I, not, I might not need 30,000. You said it on I Sean Hannity's on. Fox News. You said you know, that why you don't, might. Why don't you some, people act? Let, let me ask you. You said why some don't states, you act? Why don't you act in a little more positive? It's always trying to my get question you. To you. Get is, you, get you. And you know what? That's why nobody trusts the media anymore. That's my question why to you people, is, how is that going to impact? Excuse me, you didn't hear me. That's why you used to work for the Times, and now you work for somebody else. Look, let me tell you something. Be nice. I like China, and I like President Xi a lot. I think he's a friend of mine. He may not be a friend of mine anymore, but he, I think he probably respects. Uh, from what I hear, if you look at Mr. Pillsbury, the leading authority on China, he was on a good show. I won't mention the name of the show recently, and he was saying that China has total respect for Donald Trump and for Donald Trump's very, very large uh, brain. Nearly 200 dead, 14,000 who are sick, millions, as you witnessed, who are scared right now. What do you say to Americans who are watching you right now who are scared? 
Uh, I say that you're a terrible reporter. That's what I say. Go ahead. I think it's a very nasty question, and I think it's a very bad signal that you're putting out to the American people. The American people are looking for answers, and they're looking for hope. And you're doing sensationalism, and uh, the same with NBC and Comcast. I don't call it, I don't call it Comcast. I call it Comcast. Let me just ask for whom you work. Let me just say something. That's really bad reporting. Okay, question? Yeah, go ahead. Sure. She's shocked that I picked her. No. It's like in a state of shock. I'm not thinking, Mr. That's President. That's okay. I know you're not thinking. You never do. I'm sorry? No, go ahead. Go ahead. Do in February with the time that your travel ban bought A lot. A lot. And in fact, we'll give you a list. What we did, in fact, part of it was up there. It we did a lot. Did look, look. You know you're a fake. You know that your whole network, the way you cover it, is fake. We got some beauties. We got Sleepy Joe. We got Crazy Bernie. We got Mini Mike, but I think he's out of it. And that was probably the worst debate performance in the history of presidential debates. Do we agree? Has there ever been anything like that? It just shows you that you can't buy an election. I mean, it just is a point at which people say, you got to bring the goods a little bit, too. You got to bring the goods. Boy, did Pocahontas destroy him, I'll tell you. She choked, you know, she went out and got a test because I was killing her with a Pocahontas. Remember I said, I have more Indian blood in me than she does, and I have none. Right? I said it. I said it to her. Love to have some, but I have none. And she was getting hit with that name, Pocahontas. That was one of the good ones. And they said, we want you to apologize for that name. And I did. I apologized. Nobody ever heard me apologize before. I apologized to the real Pocahontas. I apologized. <laughs> but uh, she was really mean to Minnie Mike. I'll tell you, the way she treated her. He didn't know what hit him. He's going, oh, get me off of this stage. Get me off! Get me off of this stage! Millions, as you witnessed, who are scared right now. What do you say to Americans who are watching you right now who are scared? I say that you're a terrible reporter. That's what I say. Well, he's got a bad habit. Ladies and gentlemen of Ohio, it's great to be with you. Joe, Joe, you're in Iowa. <laughs> that was seven times he's done that. I haven't done it once. And if I did, you know what I'd do? I'd walk off the stage because there's nothing you can do to come back from that. You know, uh, he said the other night, this was really a beauty, Sleepy Joe. He said, guns have killed 150 million people in our country. We killed 150 million people? That's half of our population. This is a terrible event. We have to find out what's going on. This is bad. This wasn't reported by the fake news. Okay. Uh, Mr. President, Mr. President, I, I know that you continue to say you obviously. Okay, hold it one second. Any other questions from any other people? Okay, thank you very much, everybody. Um, at what point in the future will any American who wants a test be able to get a test? Because you're talking about not needing a test right now if you're not showing any symptoms, but a lot not of Not needing the test? Or, or, or only getting tested if um, you're showing symptoms, but a lot of this... So well, no, you should only get... You should. I didn't have any symptoms that I got a test, but I got a test because you people were driving everybody crazy. So that's the only reason. I had no symptoms, but I had a test. My doctor told me, don't get it. You don't need it. Everybody said, you don't need it. But I had to do it because the press was going crazy. And uh, then after I got it, they said, you shouldn't have gotten it. You had no symptoms. You know, the whole thing. Yeah, yeah Mr. President, after the presentation we just saw about the heat and the humidity, is it dangerous for you to make people think they would be safe by going outside in the heat, considering that so many people are dying in Florida, considering that this virus has had an outbreak in Singapore, places that are yeah, hot here, and are humid? Go. Here we go. The new, the new headline is Trump asks people to go outside. That's dangerous. Here we go. Same old group. You're the president, and people tuning into these briefings, they want to get information and guidance and want to know what to do. They're hey, not looking for feel, rumors. I'm the president, and you're fake news. I know you well, because I know the guy. I see what he writes. He's a total faker. Why are there no 
consequences for China for the misinformation How do you know that they there are no shared? consequences? We have been asked today. How do you know there are no consequences? What are the consequences, Mr. President? I wouldn't tell you. China will find out. Why would I tell you? You're going to find said, out. I wouldn't tell you. You'd probably be the last person on earth I'd tell. It amazes me when I read the Wall Street Journal, which is always so negative. Uh, it amazes me when I read the New York Times. Is not even. I don't. I barely read it. You know, we don't distribute it in the White House anymore. And the same thing with the Washington Post. So why was the United States not prepared with more testing? We were very supplies? prepared. Uh, the only thing we weren't prepared for was the. Uh, the media. So we have a lot of very angry media all around this room, and they want one of these seats. But because of social distancing, we are keeping them empty, and they are keeping them empty. Will there ever be a time when all of those really angry, angry people who don't like me much to start off with, but now they really don't like me, will there ever be a time when these seats are full, like full to the brim like it used to be, where people are almost sitting on each other's lap. You know, they say I'm close to Russia. Hillary Clinton gave away 20 percent of the uranium in the United States. She's close to Russia. Can we I gave, you know what I gave to Russia? You know what I gave? Nothing. Can we conclude there'll be no response to these particular provocations? Yeah, I'm not going to tell you anything about what response I do. I don't talk about military response. I don't say I'm going into Mosul in four months. We are going to attack Mosul in four months, then three months later. We are going to attack Mosul in one month. Next week, we are going to attack Mosul. I don't talk about military, and I don't talk about certain other things. You're going to be surprised to hear that. And by the way, my whole campaign, I'd say that. Right. So I don't have to tell you. There I don't want to response. be one of these guys that say, yes, uh, here's what we're going to do. I don't have to do that. There I don't have to tell you what I'm going to do in North Korea. Wait a minute. I don't have to tell you what I'm going to do in North Korea. And I don't have to tell you what I'm going to do with Iran. You know why? Because they shouldn't know. And eventually, you guys are going to get tired of asking that question. So when you ask me, what am I going to do with the ship, the Russian ship, as an example, I'm not going to tell you. But hopefully, I won't have to do anything. But I'm not going to tell you. OK. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Yeah. Last week, you claimed that uh, you were in charge of everything. Yet the American people don't understand why you're unwilling to use the awesome powers of your presidency. Who are you I'm with? Hold, I'm with uh, TMN. Uh, recommendations for uh, TMN. What is Talk TMN? Media News? What? My name is Doug Christian with Talk Media News. Yes. Talk Media News. Yeah. And go ahead. Keep reading your question. But, uh, the thing is how to make companies build these testing equipment so that you can do what you want. Well, what we're doing that right now. We're doing it. We're doing it right now with ventilators. We have General Motors. We have General Electric. We have eleven different companies. Great companies building them for us all over the United States. We're starting to make our own uh, gowns, as they call it. Uh, we're making some incredible things. And as far as the testing is concerned, most of that now is done in the United States. We're doing it in the United States, our different platforms. And uh, so I just don't think well, you were listening. Senators were complaining to, Which uh, senators? to Vice President Which Pence senators? yesterday. Which uh, senators? Well, uh, independent Senator Angus King. He's uh, not an independent, okay? But, Angus King is worse than any Democrat. Go but, ahead. But he said that he was, he, he was livid, actually. Of course that he this, said that. Because he's a, he's a Democrat, okay? Angus King is not an independent. He uses that term for whatever reason. It's a waste of time. But he's not a very emotive type oh, of yes, senator. Oh, yes, he is. You haven't seen him. Okay, you haven't seen him. No, Angus King is a Democrat, and that was totally staged. I heard that, and it was totally staged. Uh, just like you read the question, he read his question. How many people had died in the United States? So do you acknowledge that you didn't think you were going to Keep your voice down, please. Spread? Keep your voice down. Did you not? How many? How spread? many? How many cases were in the United States? I did a ban, where I'm closing up the entire country. How many people died? And that's how many people died in the United States? And yet I closed up the country, and I believe there were no deaths, zero deaths at the time I closed up the country. Nobody was there. And you should say thank you very much for good judgment. Trouble, Where are you from? Uh, BBC. Good. Here's another beauty. It's a good line. <laughs> Impartial, free, and fair. Yeah, um, sure. Uh, Mr. President. Just like CNN, right? Um, on the travel ban, but I said to our great First Lady, First Lady, I like calling her First Lady. 
I love Kona. The first lady. Now, see, when I have fun like that, you know what's going to happen tomorrow? That'll be a headline. He calls her first lady.